is your captain. Welcome to flying solo. Jared Poland, Frono's photo. Dot com and welcome back to Flying Solo, where we have three stars on the Flying Solo crest, which means I'm answering three of your Flying Solo questions. This week's episode is brought to you by my Gear Vault, the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear so you know what you have and what it's worth. Go download it for free right now. You have nothing to lose at mygearvault.com for iOS and Android. And let's jump in to the first question. It's uh, from John Doe. It's from John Doe because we didn't, I, I didn't get his name. I'm sorry, John Doe, but you know who you are. Here's the question. Hey, I have a huge dilemma. I have a YouTube channel with almost 2,000 subs. I, I gained them a few years ago doing some gaming videos, and now I'm into photography. So they are not active subscribers any longer. Probably not interested in new content either. So I'm not sure. Is it better to start from scratch with zero subs so my views are somewhere close to the sub number, or should I keep this channel and stick with that? Now I have 2,000 subs and 70 views per video. Now if you were doing in the 1,000 or 2,000 views per video or more, I'd probably stay, say stick with that. Now I'd be interested to see what happens if you do start a new channel. Is it better to have 100 views on a channel that has 50 subscribers? Now if they are dead subscribers because it's from a couple of years ago, it's probably okay to start anew and start fresh, especially if you have other videos on there that don't have anything to do with what you're trying to create. So I'm gonna go with that. My recommendation, start a new YouTube channel, brand it for what your, your, your types of videos are that you're going to be making this time around, and maybe before you get rid, well you're not gonna get rid of the other one, just leave it, make some content on the old one that directs people through a link or through some annotation at the end over to the new channel. If you're interested in checking out my photo type videos, go ahead and click over here and don't forget to subscribe and maybe that will give you a nice little bump at the beginning, even if it's that 70 or 100 views, maybe you will get some interest from people there. So that's that. Next question, Ben Good. I have a pretty big question for you. Is it like super big? I'm 15 year old photographer and I'm having trouble pricing my work because I'm underestimated because of my age and people take me less seriously. If you could give me some advice on how to price my portrait sessions, that would be really helpful, thanks. Now Ben, this is difficult because you are 15 and people do look at age when they're making a decision on hiring somebody because it's, it, you know, as much as I want to say it's all about the work and if your work speaks for itself, it shouldn't matter, it, it really shouldn't. Like if your portfolio went up against an 87 year old and your work was better or a 57 year old and your work was better than them in a blind test and they went with you, then that would be great. But I will say from my own personal experience, my photos at 15 that I thought were really good weren't the best yet because it took a lot more time and practice to get better. Now I've never seen your work, so I'm not saying that your work isn't worthy of getting paid a certain amount to do exactly what you're saying you wanna do here. You just have to somehow find a way to work your way through this. If there's the, it's, hmm. If you're shooting just for kids in school that you are your same age, it's gonna be difficult to get them to pay you to do the work, especially when everybody has that friend with a camera that's gonna take snapshots that may not be as good as yours, but it didn't cost them anything. If your parents can be a help in some way, like my son's a photographer, this is the type of work he does, are you interested? If they could help give you that nepotism boost somewhere, I have no problem with trying to make that happen. It's just not easy. I just, I just think you have to try and find those first couple that are worthy, worth paying you or who want to pay you, who believe in what you're doing. You have to prove to them that yes, I am 15, but my work is good, I'm gonna be on time, I'm gonna be where I need, my gear is not gonna break on me when I'm there doing the shoot. Those are things that everybody's taking into consideration when you're trying to get the, when they're trying to hire somebody to do those shoots. Um, in terms of how can you do pricing, what would, it, what would you get paid to stock shelves at the supermarket? 
I'd triple that and then call that your hourly wage. If you can make more doing the photos than you can stocking the shelves, then that's gonna be a nice boost to your bottom line and what you can make. But also understand you're 15 and you don't need as much money as if you're 25 living on your own, not, I don't know if you're living on your own or not, uh, but having all these bills, car payments, and, and all of these other things that you have as you get older. So I hope that helps some way. I hope it gives you some input. Just keep on shooting, keep trying to find your way, keep offering up your services, make a price. Think about 25 bucks an hour. Is that worth it if it's local? Is it 25 bucks an hour? Is $100 a shoot good? Is 150 a shoot? What can you get? What are people willing to pay you for what you're offering them is obviously what you can ask for. Uh, and I'm gonna, move, I'm gonna move on. I rambled on on that one, but hopefully that, I will ask you, and by you, I mean you guys out there in the world, what do you think a 15 year old could do to price their work to get portrait sessions? Or what, recommend, what recommendations do you have in case you were once a young photographer that worked for you that could then help you get paid? Because I know at 15, I wasn't getting paid very much for the people I was shooting for, but I thought it was enough. I thought it was a lot, but not compared to what you can get paid can get paid now. So moving on to the next question, we've got Lawrence Keeney. I'm an 81 year old photographer. That's interesting. We had the 15 year old photographer and we have the opposite here. We've got an 81 year old photographer and recently I believe I'm starting to lose jobs because of my age. I'm basically a studio photographer, but I have photographed ballet for a couple of years, BMX racing for six years, some tennis, etc. I pride myself in being able to capture the peak moment in a shot. Not that it matters, but I shoot with a Canon 5D Mark III with a 6D as a backup. I live in the Tulsa area. I have started doing a lot of free work since the paid work dried up. Do you have any suggestions? Now, one of my questions back to your question would be, when you did studio work, are we talking five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago? Is that something where you had a thriving studio business in a time when studio photography was a thing? Because today, studio photography isn't a thing. You don't go to people's studios as often anymore to get your family picture done. You generally are going on location to do that. And a lot of photographers also don't have studios because they can't afford or don't need to put out that extra money to go ahead and rent a studio. Uh, and, and so that's one of the questions that I would give back to you. But are people buying BMX photos? Is that something that somebody needs to buy? Have you tried working for BMX magazines? Because if your work speaks for itself, then there's no reason why they shouldn't hire you and send you out there. But I also know that certain magazines aren't paying a lot of money because magazines are dying. You could also check out online magazines and maybe you can generate a couple of bucks from those guys. It's much tougher today. The tennis, I mean, are people buying those types of images? And I, and I get it. This was a hard question when I read it because I felt really bad because I, I get it. Just like where the 15 year old is too young, people think maybe you're not capable at 81 to do those photos. But an idea that some of the guys here at the studio and I were tossing around is that you have people in their 70s and people in their 80s and 90s that may not have had great photos taken in decades. Maybe you could be the person that goes out there and photographs great images of these guys and gals wherever they are and their family may want to purchase them because they're very important images to have. I know that I photographed my mother, I photographed my grandmother and my grandfather and those images are great for us to have today and the family loves having those. Maybe you can start telling the stories of your contemporaries, some people that are younger, some people, people that are older and those images may get picked up somewhere. If you have a phone, start putting this stuff on Instagram. Be that person that does that. If you can do that, or if you have family members who could help you out with that, if you need that, then go for it. But I think that is another direction that you could look that could lead to getting paid, but also sharing stories of people because everybody has a story. You could be the, the humans of New York for the centenarian age group type of people. They're 100 years old and you're telling their stories. But think about it, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90 year old people that may, never, may not have had great photos for years, their families may like it. And if they like those photos, maybe they're gonna hire you for some other things. 
and that could work out. So I, I, again, open it up to you guys out there. Have you been in this situation where there's been an older photographer? What have they done in the past, from your knowledge, that has worked out? Well, and that's, that's it. That's the last one. If you'd like to submit your flying solo question for the possibility of me answering it, hopefully in a good way, go to bit.ly slash Critiques to do so. Follow all the directions that are on the screen that are there. And if you're going to ask a gear-related question, make sure you include what you currently own, what you like to shoot, and what your budget is so I can better guide you in helping you find that gear that's for you. And that's it for this one. Jared Poland, Fro Knows Photo. Dot com. See ya. And to finish this up, don't forget to subscribe. To check out the last flying solo, go ahead and click up on the screen right now, or you could click on the other video that's some cool random video that I'm not sure what it is just yet, but I know it's going to be awesome. So click on it. Click on one of them. Flip a coin. Heads or tails. I don't know. <laughs>